My name is Jared Beckstrand. I'm a doctor of physical therapy. I run the channel Tone and Titan here on YouTube, and I have a broken foot. It all happened about three weeks ago. I was playing basketball and landed awkwardly on the outside of my foot. I heard a big pop and felt a big pop. By the time I got home and got my shoe off, it looked like this. Pretty gross, I know. I went in for x-rays the next day, and they confirmed that I did in fact break my fifth metatarsal, that's the pinky bone, out there on the outside of my foot. When I went in, the podiatrist told me that I'd be non-weight bearing on my foot for the next six weeks while that bone heals. He gave me this sweet boot, he gave me a pair of crutches, and said don't put any weight on your foot for the next six weeks, and then come back in, we'll take another x-ray, and we'll see how it's healed. Well, it took me from his office to about my car for me to realize that I do not like crutches. So when I got home, I jumped online and I bought a bunch of different assistive devices with hopes that one of them would work out a little bit better. There are certainly some that I like more than others and there are pros and cons to each one. I thought it might be useful if I jumped in here and left you a review of some of those pros and cons for each one of these mobility devices. So I hope you find this useful. Of course, if you do, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button down below. Thank you so much for doing that in advance. Now, this video is not sponsored or endorsed by any one of these companies. This is just my honest opinion of what has worked for me and what hasn't. However, if you are interested in purchasing any of these or want to look into these a little bit more, I do have each one of these products linked in the description down below to this video. So make sure you click on those links to learn more. I'll be counting these down in order from number four to number one, from my least favorite to my most favorite, and I'll do it right now. Coming in at number four on my list, I alluded to them earlier, are the axillary crutches, or the standard crutches, or the armpit crutches. Now the biggest pro to these is that they are very intuitive to use. They are very user-friendly, and they make sense for a lot of people. They support you through the armpits, they support you through your arms, so there's not much upper body strength required to operate these. There's no weight limitation, and they make ambulation very easy for most people. It's easy to see why they're the go-to for most instant care and emergency room facilities. They're very simple to use. Ambulation is very simple. You can even go up and down stairs with them with a little practice. However, in my opinion, the cons on these armpit crutches far outweigh the pros. The biggest one being they hurt. After a day walking around on these, I was pretty raw here underneath my armpit and up in my lap. My hands were also pretty tender by the end of the day. They're also a little more clunky, a little more cumbersome, and a little bit more difficult as far as mobility in tight spaces is concerned. Finally, one of the biggest cons about these crutches to me is they leave you unable to use your hands. Your hands are busy holding yourself up and trying to manage and navigate the crutches. You can't carry anything, you can't lift anything. It becomes very difficult to do even just very simple tasks like getting ready in the morning or preparing meals, things of that nature. It's for those reasons that these axillary crutches come in at number four on my list. Number three on my list would be the forearm crutch. Now, these are much less clunky, much less cumbersome, and you're much more agile with these. Because they're so much smaller, you can go a lot faster, there's a much tighter turning radius, and you can actually do stairs really quickly. The cons on these is that there is a lot of pressure on your hands, and they do require a lot of upper body strength in order to function properly. And with the forearm crutches, we run into the same problem that we ran into with the axillary crutches, and that is you're just not able to use your hands. Once again, in order to carry anything or lift anything or perform simple tasks, it becomes very difficult because your hands are occupied all the time. They are definitely a great option for a lot of people, but I think we can still do better. Which brings me to number two on my list, the knee scooter. Now, hands down, the biggest pro to this one is that it's very fast. In fact, you can go faster on this than most people can walk, provided that you're on a level ground or even slightly downhill. Uphill is a little bit more difficult. I also like this one because it's very comfortable. It's got a nice pad here on your knee, and a lot of your weight is supported through your shin bone. That's something that you don't get with crutches. You have to hold your leg in front of you or hold your leg back behind you. The other thing that I loved about this, brakes to control your speed, and I got one with a basket on the front because like I mentioned, one of my biggest complaints with the crutches was there was no way to carry anything, there was nowhere to put anything. That all changes if you get a little 
knee scooter with a basket on it. Now there are certainly some cons with the knee scooter. Uh, the biggest one I think is that it's a little large, it's a little cumbersome. Navigating this around in tight spaces does become a little bit difficult. So if you have an apartment or a tight space or a small room or something, please keep that in mind. It's something that I didn't anticipate. Also, transportation on this is a little bit tricky as well. You gotta have a big trunk that you can fit this in if you're planning on taking it places. So keep that in mind. This one does fold down, which makes it a little better, um, but keep in mind that it's kind of a pain to have to transport this to, to different places. Another thing that's difficult with a knee scooter are curbs and stairs. They're nearly impossible to go up and down, so please keep that in mind. Another thing that I found out very quickly is the cracks in the cement, potholes, things like that become an absolute hazard. So if you live in a place where the terrain isn't very even, please keep that in mind. It does not roll very smoothly over that uneven terrain. Finally, one more time with this, your hands are occupied. It makes lifting and carrying things and performing simple tasks while you're on the scooter a little bit more difficult. The basket certainly does help, but keep in mind that even with this, your hands are occupied as well. I think we can still do better. Let's get to number one. Which brings us to the number one spot, my favorite mobility device in this list that I'm presenting to you today. This is called the iWalk 3.0. Now, I have totally got this one on a whim. I was actually looking for a wheeled scooter on Amazon, and this one popped up in my search results, and I can't tell you how happy I am that I did. As far as normal walking is concerned, this is the closest that I've been able to come while still maintaining this non-weight-bearing position. You'll see that my lower leg is completely supported. I'm definitely non weight bearing on that foot, but I still have complete use of my hands. And again, this is a game changer for me. I've been able to do things like the dishes and meal prep, fold laundry, even getting ready in the morning um, is completely accessible with this one. I've even taken this outside. I've done some light yard work with this. You can go up and down stairs and ramps very easily. Um, my favorite, my personal favorite part of this is you guys know me, I love to be fit, I love to be active, I love to work out. I have had this in my gym, I've worked out a bunch with this. Uh, with a little creativity, there are a lot of things that you can still do with this iWalk crutch. Now that's not to say that there aren't any cons with this. Uh, first and foremost, there is a lot of energy required with this one. In fact, you have to meet certain criteria that kind of take you through this list to decide whether or not you're even a good fit for this iWalk crutch. So keep that in mind. It is a little tender. The hip flexor and the lower back does get a little sore with this uh, within the first couple of days, just using muscles a little bit differently than you normally would, but that has gone away. Uh, there also is some tenderness. I got some kind of right back here behind the knee. It's okay when you're wearing pants, but if you have shorts on, uh, this strap right here can rub a little bit. I found that a neoprene sleeve took care of that. That helped it to feel a lot better. And then finally, it is very slow. I definitely don't recommend this for longer distances, but in the house, this is pretty much all that I use just because of the functionality, just because of all of the things that I mentioned previously, completely worth every penny. This was by far my favorite that I use. Now, one more time, I've got all of these assistive devices linked in the description down below this video, so you can go there to check them out. But if you have any questions, if you have any comments, if there's anything that I can help you out with about any of these, I'm certainly happy to help you out. Go ahead and leave me a comment down below. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to help you out however I can. Now, it's important while you're not weight bearing on your leg to keep that leg strong and healthy. Trust me on this, the stronger you keep those muscles in that leg, the faster and the better your recovery is going to be. If you're interested in a simple workout program that you can do at home that's gonna meet those criteria, help you to keep that leg nice and strong while you're not weight bearing on it, I actually just recorded one last week. You can click right here, check that out. Now, for some reason, YouTube thinks that you might like this video, so you might check that one out from Tone and Titan. Of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, I'd love to see you here more regularly. Hit the circle button right here to do that. We'll see you again next time here on Tony Titan.